Hi, I'm Raju Dantaluri, and in this video, my colleague Emma and I are going to talk about the cancellation and refund process for AWS Marketplace subscriptions. We will be covering refund and cancellation initiation, what happens after a refund is processed, and how to confirm an applied refund credit. Let's dive in. How is a refund or cancellation initiated? Let's start by establishing who can initiate a refund. Charges for AWS Marketplace subscriptions are paid to the seller of the product, and refunds must be requested from the seller directly. The buyer and the seller must come to an agreement regarding a refund, and then the seller can request the refund. If a buyer requests a refund and or contract cancellation directly from AWS, Customer service will instruct them to contact the seller using the seller's posted support contact information for the product in question. Please note AWS Marketplace refunds are at the seller's discretion and AWS will not supersede this decision. Buyers can cancel subscriptions to pay-as-you-go products at any time and public contract subscriptions within 48 hours without reaching out to the seller. However, for contract-based subscriptions for public offers after 48 hours or private offer contract cancellations, the seller will need to initiate the process. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a demo that walks through the different stages of submitting a refund and how to track progress. Sellers can leverage the refund form for both a refund and or contract cancellation request. To initiate, the seller will need to access the Refund Request section under the Support tab on their AWS Marketplace Management Portal or AMP. Click on the Request Refund button, which will take you to the refund page. The refund form requires sellers to input buyer and transaction-specific information. We recommend having a second tab open to leverage the Build Revenue Dashboard available under Insights tab within the Seller's AMP Portal. Once you have both tabs open and can access the Build Revenue Dashboard, filter for the specific customer or offer in question. For this example, I filtered based on the offer ID. You will find all the granular data required for the refund form at the bottom of the dashboard under the Granular Data section. The first item to fill on the refund form is the subscriber's AWS account number. This is the AWS account that subscribed to the offer for which the refund and or cancellation request is targeted to. On the Build Revenue Dashboard, you can find this under the Subscriber AWS Account ID. The seller's AWS account number is automatically populated by the system from your login. If you have multiple seller accounts, please ensure you are logged into the account that owns the product this refund and or contract cancellation request targets. The product ID can be found in the granular data section of the dashboard under column Legacy Product ID. If the request involves a refund, choose the correct billing period. You can find the month from the Usage Period Start Date column within the dashboard. In this example, the Usage Period says it's June, so I'm going ahead and choosing June. Next, choose if this is a full refund or a partial refund. If partial refund, enter the dollar value that is to be refunded. If there are refunds to be issued for multiple billing periods, you can click on Add Another Billing Period and enter the information similar to the ones above. If this request is only for contract cancellation and no refunds are necessary, you can set the billing period to the current month, choose partial, and set the refund amount to zero. In the additional comment section, we recommend specifying the invoice ID this refund targets to. You can find this under the invoice ID column of the dashboard. If this request includes a contract cancellation, please specify the same in the comment section and include the offer ID. You can find the offer ID in the Build Revenue Dashboard as well. Once all the information is keyed in, click Submit Product Refund Form. 
Upon submission, you will be presented a reference ID. Please save this ID for your records. Now, let's look at what happens after a refund or cancellation request is submitted. The AWS customer service team processes refunds and cancellations. Once the refund is processed, the AWS customer service team will provide the update via a case on the support console to both the seller and buyer. The seller and buyer will also receive email notifications to the root email associated with their respective accounts. Additionally, if the AWS customer service team has further questions regarding the refund, they will reach out to the seller via the support console. As best practice, we recommend sellers to inform buyers that they will be contacted by AWS via the support console for cancellation confirmations. If a seller requires a certain refund and or contract cancellation request expedited, we recommend the seller reach out to the AWS customer service team via the support console. The seller can choose the severity of their support case if they have a developer or a higher support plan. Providing the reference ID for the refund or contract cancellation request will help the AWS customer service team retrieve the necessary details and action it. Here's what this looks like in practice. Once you submit a refund and or contract cancellation request, you can find updates regarding your submission via the support center on your AWS console by clicking on support. From here, click on see all cases. If the AWS customer service requires any clarification regarding your submission, you will find a case update similar to the one here. On the case, they will detail the next steps before they can action your request. In similar fashion, once your submission is processed successfully, you will find a case update notifying you of the same, like the one here. For contract cancellations, AWS Customer Service will reach out to the buyer via the support center. We recommend sellers inform the buyers ahead of time to look for a notification on their AWS support console so they can sign off on the cancellation when customer service reaches out to them. If you do not see any updates on your submission and would like to expedite, please click Create Case, choose Account and Billing, choose Marketplace at the Service, select Marketplace Seller Request, click Next, and enter the information such as the refund reference ID and requesting a status update and clicking on contact us. This will create a case for the AWS customer service team who will respond to you as per their SLAs. Let's go through a quick recap of what we covered for submitting a refund and cancellation request. To successfully submit a cancellation or refund request as a seller, you will need access to the Support tab under AWS Marketplace Management Portal, or AMP, the Build Revenue Dashboard under Insights tab on AMP, and the AWS Support Console to receive updates from AWS Customer Service. You will also need your AWS Seller Account ID, the subscriber's AWS account number, the product ID, the invoice and billing period the refund is for, and the offer ID. As a reminder, make sure you are logged into the account that owns the product the refund or cancellation is for. And once submitted, please keep the reference ID for your records. Now, I will hand it off to Emma to walk you through what happens after a refund is processed. Thanks. Let's dive in. A refund can be processed in two ways, depending on whether the buyer's default payment instrument is a credit card or invoicing. If credit card, the refund will be processed to the buyer's bank account. If invoicing, the buyer will receive an AWS credit memo that can be utilized towards open AWS marketplace invoices. Next, I'll be diving deeper into invoicing refunds. For invoicing refunds, the buyer will see this show up as a credit memo in the unapplied funds section of their billing console. A refund can be processed regardless of whether an invoice has been paid. If the original invoice has not yet been paid, 
AWS will generate a credit memo that can be applied to net out the open balance of the invoice. If the original invoice has already been paid, AWS will generate a credit memo for the buyer to utilize against an open AWS Marketplace invoice. The buyer can work with their AWS Accounts Receivable Analyst or submit a billing and account support case. You will need to reference the credit memo ID and the respective invoice ID it should be applied to. Next, I'll be going over an example of how a credit memo is applied when it is used to refund an invoice that has already been paid. Let's say, in this example, a customer makes a $100 purchase from a seller. AWS charges the customer $100. The customer then pays the invoice in full, the AWS listing fee of $10 is applied, so $90 is dispersed to the seller. Then, the customer and seller agree on a refund for the full amount of the invoice. The seller submits a refund request for the total amount of the customer's bill of $100 and AWS issues a $100 credit to the customer that could be used against an open AWS Marketplace invoice. From there, the customer will receive a $100 credit memo via the billing console and uses it against an open AWS Marketplace invoice. Once the credit memo has been used by the buyer, AWS will retract the amount of the original disbursement, in this case $90, from the seller's upcoming disbursement. Sellers can utilize their Collections and Disbursements Insights dashboard to view and confirm refunds. To view a refund, sellers will see a line item with a negative amount under the Gross Refund column within the Granular Data section. The gross refund column reflects the total amount refunded to the buyer. Sellers can also confirm in the dashboard if a credit memo from a refund has been used in full by the buyer. First, by scrolling to the granular data section. Then, by scrolling to the gross refund column. An invoice where the gross refund has a non-zero value and a disbursement status as dispersed signals that the credit from a refund has been utilized. An invoice where the gross refund column has a non-zero value and a disbursement status as not dispersed signals that the credit from a refund has not yet been applied in full. To recap, an invoice where the gross refund column has a non-zero value and a disbursement status listed as dispersed, this signals that the credit from a refund has been applied. An invoice where the gross refund column has a non-zero value and a disbursement status listed as not dispersed, this signals that the credit from a refund has not yet been applied in full. Thank you. If you have any further questions regarding the refund and cancellation process, please reach out to customer service via the support console.